What if we could fit all the billions of years of Earth's history into one day? At what time would life have emerged here? How many minutes or hours would dinosaurs have lasted? And how long have humans existed? Seconds or even less? In a moment, you'll see. The history of Earth in 24 hours. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see even more interesting content. It's zero hour. A new star has just emerged, one that someday will be called the sun. A cloud of dust and gas continues to orbit around it, the remnants of a massive and ancient star that died long ago. Within this cloud, a clump of dust is forming, and it's growing. Eventually, this shapeless mass becomes a planet. This is Earth. At that time, a day on Earth lasted about six hours. Over time, the gravitational pull of the moon slowed Earth's rotation gradually making the day longer. At 40 minutes, something approaches Earth. No, not an asteroid. Another planet, Thea. This neighbor of Earth was roughly the size of Mars. Over millions of years, their orbits drew closer. Thea collided with Earth at an angle, completely disintegrating. Its molten debris and Earth's lava clumped together over the next few centuries, forming a spherical object. That's how the moon was born. At 1 hour 13 minutes, we can already see the first oceans. As Earth cooled, water vapor released by volcanoes began to condense. Rain fell for the first time. Water bodies appeared on the planet's surface. At first, those were small puddles that quickly evaporated, but soon they became larger and more stable. The planet was still hot, and water barely remained in a liquid state, with temperatures ranging from 40 to 85 degrees Celsius, from 104 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. In some areas, there were lakes of boiling water. Water came from the rain and from degassing of the Earth's interior through volcanic activity. Space also helped a lot. Water-rich asteroids and comets bombarded Earth. This process is continuous and is happening little by little even right now, as you are watching this video. Indeed, about 60 to 100 tons of cosmic material falls on Earth every day. By 1 hour 52 minutes, hot streams with mixes of volcanic origin flow from the depths of Earth into the water under immense pressure. In these places, nature creates natural chemical laboratories, randomly rearranging combinations of molecules. The first breakthrough occurs, the synthesis of the first organic molecule. Amino acids, RNA, and proteins begin to form. Over time, the primordial soup becomes saturated, and structures capable of self-replication emerge. It's 4 hours and 30 minutes. The first fully formed cell appears. From this moment, life on the planet officially exists. At 5 hours 53 minutes, the first viruses appear. Around the same time, Earth's core separates into two layers, an inner solid core and an outer liquid one. The metallic liquid layer begins to rotate around the inner core, generating a magnetic field. As a result, magnetic poles form, which will shift every 200,000 to 300,000 years, equivalent to 5 to 6 seconds on our clock. About 5 hours later, at 11 hours and 13 minutes, primitive prokaryotes are already creating the simplest ecosystems, trying to find efficient ways to obtain energy. These organisms are very simple, almost like tiny houses without separate rooms. One type of these prokaryotes, cyanobacteria, begins the process of photosynthesis. They learn to use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into food, releasing oxygen as a byproduct. This process changes the Earth's atmosphere. At 11 hours and 35 minutes, the great oxygenation event strikes the planet. 
Cyanobacteria release so much oxygen that it cannot react quickly enough with substances in the atmosphere and water, accumulating as free gas. For most living organisms, this was a deadly poison. However, by this time, bacterial communities capable of using oxygen for energy had already emerged. They lived in rare oxygen pockets, which now began to spread across the planet. At 13 hours and 39 minutes, life transitions to oxygen-based energy. At the same time, life begins to take on new forms. One cell engulfs another, but instead of digesting it, the engulfed cell adapts and starts performing useful functions. This is how an endosymbiotic union forms, leading to the emergence of a new type of cell, eukaryotes. The difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is vast. A prokaryote is like a studio apartment where everything is in one room, while a eukaryote is like a large house with separate rooms. A eukaryote has a nucleus, a specialized room for storing and processing genetic information, mitochondria, the power station, and many other organelles, each performing its specific function. By 15 hours, 43 minutes, cells had begun to cluster together, forming primitive multicellular life. Just two hours later, by 17 hours and 47 minutes, fully developed multicellular life had formed. The first organism to reproduce sexually, the alga Bangiomorpha, appeared. By this time, the first fungi had also emerged, but something unexpected was about to happen to Earth. At 20 hours and 38 minutes, the climate suddenly changed due to greenhouse gases and ocean currents, leading to the Marinoan glaciation, also known as Snowball Earth. The planet became covered in ice several miles thick, and temperatures dropped to negative 50 degrees Celsius, negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Most life forms died out, with only organisms in the oceans, hot springs, and ice cracks surviving. At 20 hours, 43 minutes, ongoing volcanic activity melted the glaciers in the oceans and on land, and the surviving organisms occupied new ecological niches. At 21 hours and two minutes, the Avalon explosion began, an explosion of life. The Ediacaran biota emerges, the first complex multicellular organisms. These were mostly soft-bodied, radially symmetrical creatures. Some organisms reached tens of inches. Unlike earlier simple multicellular forms, the Ediacaran biota displayed an unprecedented diversity of shapes, structures, and ways of life. At 21 hours and 12 minutes, the Cambrian explosion occurred. Life became much more complex, and the first organisms with hard body parts appeared. Nature began to experiment with different forms and functions. Among the first to emerge were trilobites, arthropods with hard exoskeletons that quickly spread throughout the seas. The ancestors of all vertebrates began to appear, such as the bichaea, a creature with a primitive spine. Strange forms like hallucigenia with spines and wiwaxia covered in armored plates also emerged. By 21 hours and 27 minutes, the Cambrian explosion had come to an end. Around 21 hours and 34 minutes, plants have emerged on land. These are still simple forms of life, resembling mosses. They lack roots and absorb moisture from the environment through their entire body. Once plants take hold on land, they begin to transform the earth itself. They produce oxygen and lay the foundation for new ecosystems. These first plants not only stabilized the land, but also created a habitat for the first land animals. At 21 hours and 40 minutes, the first animals start to colonize the land. These early settlers are arthropods, direct ancestors of modern insects, spiders, and centipedes. As plants begin to cover the wet coastal areas, animals follow in search of food and new places to live. At 21 hours and 50 minutes, the oceans are still teeming with life. The age of fish, the Devonian period, has begun. The waters are bustling with diversity, from jawless creatures to large predators like sharks and armored fish. Significant changes occur in lobe-finned fish. One of them, Tiktaalik, begins using its fins to move in shallow waters, almost like limbs. It seems as though it's on the verge of making an important evolutionary leap. At 22 hours and 5 minutes, this leap finally happens. 
we witness an extraordinary event. The first amphibians come from the water onto land. These creatures are descendants of lobe-finned fish, which evolved their fins into primitive limbs that now allow them to move on land. Ichthyostega and Acanthostega are well-known examples from this time. They have simple legs, but they still retain fins and lateral lines to sense vibrations in the water. Although they still rely on water for reproduction and moisture, they are able to hunt and live on land. At 22 hours and 16 minutes, the continents converged, forming the supercontinent Pangaea. These collisions led to the formation of mountains. The climate changed, the interior areas of the continent became dry, while the coastlines turned tropical. By 22 hours and 20 minutes, the first reptiles appear on land. These descendants of amphibians develop features that allow them to be completely independent of water bodies and expand their habitat. These creatures are small and inconspicuous, for now. It's 22 hours and 48 minutes. We are in the Triassic period. Some reptiles have evolved into the first dinosaurs. These creatures were still small and resembled large lizards, but they had some details that set them apart. Their key distinction was an upright stance. Unlike most reptiles of that time, dinosaurs walked with their legs positioned under their bodies, rather than to the sides. This feature made them faster and more agile. They diverge into two main branches. One, Saurischians, which includes predators like Tyrannosaurus and herbivores like Diplodocus. The other, Ornithischians, which later evolved into giant herbivores such as Triceratops, Stegosaurs, and others. There were no carnivorous Ornithischians. By 23 hours 13 minutes, some evolutionary branches of dinosaurs took a very unique path. Descendants of small predatory dinosaurs such as Dromaeosaurs led to the emergence of the first feathered theropods. One of the first species, Archaeopteryx, combined dinosaur traits like teeth and a tail with the ability to make short flights. Over time, feathers became used for flight, wings lengthened, and the body looked more streamlined. Confuciusornis, with a short tail and beak, became one of the first true birds. Thus, modern birds evolved from dinosaurs. 23 hours and 16 minutes marks a true revolution in the world of plants, the emergence of the first flowering plants. Before this, the earth was dominated by ferns, conifers, and cycads, which reproduced by spores or naked seeds. By developing flowers and fruits, flowering plants gained an important evolutionary advantage. As complex structures, flowers allowed plants to attract pollinators like insects. This partnership between plants and pollinators proved to be incredibly successful. The planet thrived, oceans and land teemed with life. There was no sign of an impending disaster. At 23 hours and 39 minutes, a massive asteroid larger than Mount Everest, measuring around 6 miles in diameter, strikes Earth at a speed of 12 miles per second, near the present-day Yucatan Peninsula. The fiery ball instantly vaporizes everything within a thousand kilometer radius. The impact creates a crater about 120 miles wide and several miles deep. A colossal cloud of dust and debris envelops the planet, plunging it into darkness. The sky darkens, the dust blocks sunlight, temperatures soar, raging firestorms sweep across the land, forests burn, and ecosystems are annihilated. Seas boil, and animals die from the heat and lack of oxygen. Soon after, temperatures plummet due to less sunlight reaching the planet's surface, leading to global cooling. Photosynthesis halts and ecosystems collapse. Dinosaurs die out from the cold and starvation. The climate becomes harsh. Storms, tsunamis, earthquakes, and forest fires ravage the planet. After several years, the dust begins to settle. Once again, sunlight reaches the Earth's surface and the climate starts to recover. A heartbreaking scene unfolds in the weak rays of the sun. Up to 75% of all living species have completely disappeared forever. Those that survive desperately adapt to the new conditions, with ecological niches now open after the catastrophic extinction, life on Earth begins to recover. Temperatures return to normal, although the climate has changed forever. This is the rise of mammals. 
Mammals, which were previously small and mostly nocturnal, now occupy the freed niches and evolve rapidly. Their warm-bloodedness, live birth, and fur allowed them to become the dominant species. Some remained on land, others returned to the water, and some settled in trees. And among them, a few special ones emerge. By 23 hours and 40 minutes, we can already observe small animals resembling modern lemurs. They are nocturnal creatures. They find food and protect themselves from ground predators in the trees. These are primates. By this time, Plesiodapus appears, one of the earliest creatures classified as primates. They developed some key features. Vision became their primary sense. They had flexible limbs with fingers for climbing and an enlarged brain ensuring vision and coordination. At 23 hours and 49 minutes, the first narrow-nosed monkeys appear. And by 23 hours and 58 minutes, something legendary is about to happen. On the African continent, dense forests transform into savannas. Primates are forced to come down from the trees and adapt to life on the ground. This leads to the emergence of Ceylanthropus chidensis, one of the first hominids, steadily walking on two legs while retaining some ape-like features. Bipedalism was not just an evolutionary trick. It facilitated the development of intelligence, as the freed forelimbs proved useful for many tasks. After 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 13 seconds, everything happens in the last minute of history. Homo habilis, or handyman, emerges. Homo habilis had a relatively larger brain, around 600 to 750 cube centimeters, compared to its predecessors. However, its physical structure was still quite primitive, with long arms and a small body. At the 24th second of the last minute of history, Homo erectus appears. They have an even larger brain with a volume of 850 to 1100 cube centimeters. Homo erectus is fully adapted to bipedal life and has more proportionate limbs. Homo erectus takes a decisive step, leaving Africa and spreading into Asia and Europe, and they are already attempting to master fire. At the 48th second, Homo heidelbergensis appears. They have an even larger brain, 1100 to 1400 cubed centimeters. These beings skillfully use fire and build shelters. They hunt large animals, such as mammoths and rhinos, using wooden spears and stone tools. This requires collective effort and planning. Two seconds later, Homo neanderthalensis emerges. With an even larger brain, 1200 to 1750 cubic centimeters, 73 to 107 cubic inches, they are excellent hunters and even more socially developed. Neanderthals care for the sick and elderly, bury their dead, and perform rituals. They develop rudimentary speech. At the 54th second, Homo sapiens appears. Like Neanderthals, they are descendants of Homo heidelbergensis. At this moment, all three species coexist on the planet. Homo heidelbergensis in Africa, Europe, and Western Asia. Neanderthals in Europe and the Middle East. Homo sapiens in Africa. Two seconds later, Homo heidelbergensis disappears. They cannot adapt to changing environmental conditions and partially go extinct, while others assimilate and blend into new human species. At the 58th second, the first Homo sapiens sapiens, modern humans, appear. Almost immediately, they begin migrating out of Africa, populating other continents. At the last 59th second, Neanderthals become extinct. Some of their DNA remains in modern humans due to interbreeding between species. A fraction of a second later, humans survive the last minor ice age. The climate becomes more stable and favorable for farming and domesticating animals. The Neolithic Revolution occurs and humans develop agriculture. This fundamentally changes humanity. People transition to a sedentary lifestyle. The population begins to grow. Labor specialization and social hierarchies emerge, and technological advancement accelerates. At the 915th millisecond, the pyramids of Giza are built. Moments later, the first commercially successful steam engine is created. Another five milliseconds later, the ARPANET, the internet's precursor, is developed. And now, we are in the era of the internet and AI. You are watching this video and hitting the like button.